What's up everybody, it's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. I know you guys haven't heard from us in a while, but we're back at it again and it's getting to be that time of year where it's time to start scouting for deer. Um, so I'm headed out right now um, at the end of the day just trying to get, you know, the time of day when the temperature's not so crazy. It's just been so darn hot. But I'm heading out to a couple spots that I know are typically pretty productive. Uh, during deer season, so I don't necessarily need to scout them. Um, I'm gonna go hang up a few cameras. I am uh, taking my AR-15 with me, and uh, if I see a hog pop out, I'm gonna shoot it, because uh, I'm out of breakfast sausage, and my wife has been asking me to make more, so. Dude, that is a big deer. And he didn't even go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo, what a rush. Money, that deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. You shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. Also, it is worth mentioning, um, we are doing our annual uh, deer and hog scouting workshop together with backcountry hunters and anglers. Um, we do this every summer right before archery season gets going. The perfect time for you to scout. So if you are new to hunting in Florida or you feel like you can learn how to scout better, we basically get a whole bunch of uh, really experienced hunters here in South Florida to take groups of people out into a preserve and show them um, deer and hog sign and how to read that sign and then how to proceed hunting those spots. Um, you'll learn a lot even if you already know a lot. Um, so hopefully you guys will join us for that. It's gonna be on June 29th. We hope to see you guys there. Now let's get into the video. Beautiful day, it's hot but uh, starting to cool off, it's the end of the day. And uh, heading out to a couple spots, put out some cameras, and uh, if I happen to see a hog on the way, it's gonna get it. But so far all I've seen is this raccoon right in front of me. Not what I'm looking for. All right guys, first camera's up, up there. I think I see a couple hogs up here. about 300 yards away. They're just walking along the canal going the other way it looks like. See if I can get a little closer to them.
want to see him. I think my best bet is to get back on the levee. See if I can get a little closer. Well, I definitely hit one. I have no idea where I hit him, though. Oh, I dropped him. He's on the ground right there. Awesome. All right. Not a good shot. I don't know how I hit him, but his guts are out. But that last one, right through the brain. <sighs> I'm not proud. I'm not proud of the way that went. I probably could have done better on that, but they look like they were about to bolt. And I uh, made a quick shot. Sorry, little buddy. He's done, though. Oh. At least he didn't suffer too long. All right. I'm going to go get the bike. It's a couple hundred yards back. Get this thing gutted out. And uh, get the heck out of here. i got work in the morning. All right, so I was just uh, editing this video and uh, realized that I'm also about to cook up some of this hog for dinner tonight. So why not make it a catch clean cook? So here's what we got going on. I took the ham of this hog and uh, let me get it out and show you what I did. So here is the ham of this little hog. It's a nice little hog, obviously. Um, as you can see, I cut off the uh, the the shank here, which is like the bottom part. It's all tendons and stuff. It's not going to be good in a roast. That stuff goes in the grind pile. But this main piece of meat is probably going to be quite nice in a roast. So what I did, you can see there's a couple of stab holes. Um, and I have garlic. See? Garlic cloves shoved inside of them. Um, and when it cooks, those garlic cloves are going to help keep everything nice and moist, give it a lot of flavor. Um, so I did that on both sides. I salted it and I put it into a mojo um, marinade. Now mojo is uh, very popular 
in South American countries. Um, and it's a great way to tenderize meat because it's a citrus based marinade and that citrus has citric acid and acids tend to help break down the proteins um, that you know make meat tough so it's been soaking in that for about I don't know five six hours and I'm gonna do something I've never even tried so you guys you guys are gonna find out together with me if this is even good but we're gonna put because it's such a small little roast instead of doing this in the oven like I usually do it's actually gonna go in my wife's air fryer, which I need to clean up, but uh, that should make it nice and crispy. So as you can see, uh, because of that citric acid, um, the flesh looks kind of sad. It looks kind of gray. So we want to make sure when it comes out of the air fryer, it's going to look happy and crispy. So we're going to use a little bit of grapeseed oil. You really just need a, a high temperature, like a high smoke point oil to do an air fryer, because otherwise the oil will burn. Grapeseed oil is good, avocado oil, whatever. So we're gonna put a little drizzle, rub that around. So we've got something sticky for all the seasonings to attach to. All right, so we got that. This is obviously a lot harder with a single hand. wipe it on my shirt and we're gonna hit it with some simple seasonings nothing too crazy we're gonna hit it with salt and I, I don't want a lot of salt I just want enough that um, the moisture that comes out of this thing while it's cooking um, salts gonna help kind of make that evaporate and crisp it up so we're, we're gonna hit it with some paprika because that's gonna give it a nice color always love paprika on a roast <clears throat> roasted garlic powder you can never go wrong with roasted garlic powder always throw i'll literally put roasted garlic powder on pretty much everything that i cook <clears throat> and finally we're gonna do a little bit of basil you can also just do like some italian seasoning um see so doesn't that look way happier already we're gonna flip it over do the same thing on the other side all right, here we go. <clears throat> it's looking happy. So um, here's what we're gonna do. So I've been experimenting a little bit with uh, with cooking uh, roasts in the air fryer. And what I've found is the little grate that comes in an air fryer, that thing, you don't need that. You don't want it because what's gonna happen is a lot of juices are gonna cook out of this and they're gonna sit in the bottom of that air fryer. And you actually want the meat to sit in that because it's going to like keep it nice and juicy. So what I like to do is I'll put it in upside down from the way I want to present it. Um, and then uh, I'll flip it over for like another just like four or five minutes just to get that both sides of it nice and crispy. So I'm going to take the thermometer here for my meat thermometer. And we're gonna go in on the largest side, which is gonna be here, which is very difficult to do while I hold the camera. Okay, there we go. Touching the bone, that's important. Right up against that bone, because that's gonna be the deepest spot. So, just like that. And now I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna set it in here. And you wanna make sure that that thermometer remains touching the bone just like that. Now we got this thing set up. We're gonna come over here to the air fryer. Like I said, this will come right out the side and we can plug it in to the meat thermometer. So we're gonna put it on air roast. I don't know what the hell that means. I guess that's gonna be on 375. <clears throat> sure. Yeah, let's do that. And then I'm just going to set it for 20 minutes because I don't think it's going to have to go longer than that. I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to keep an eye on the temperature <clears throat> and, um, and then flip. I'll probably flip it when it gets to like 110 or something. Yeah. Let's see what happens. All right. So I've got the thermometer in there. The inside's at 152 right now. It's been resting for about 
I don't know, six minutes or so. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but there's definitely juices inside. So hopefully they don't all come flowing out. I'm gonna cut into it right now. <clears throat> Let's see what happens. Say that looks the way pork should look when it's cooked. <laughs> Not too shabby. Good. All right, I guess we're gonna find out if it's any good. All right. I hope you guys uh, liked that video, and if you did, make sure you like and subscribe. Go check us out on Instagram, and also I mentioned it before, but come see us at our scouting workshop June 29th in um, Jupiter, Florida. You can find all the details for that in the link in the description. We're gonna eat this pork leg right now. Catch you guys next week.